Hello and welcome. For today's video review, we got the new Alienware 620M. This is the successor of the Alienware 610M. Now it comes in a right-handed asymmetrical shape, similar to the Logitech G502 or the Razer Basilisk. Let's see if Alienware's latest wireless mice is worth the 100 US dollars retail price. The box design is really good with holographic and shiny elements. You get two options when it comes to colors. This one is the lunar light, which is the white one, and there's dark side of the moon, which is the black one. The first thing that I noticed is that this mouse is large. The main body is made of hard plastic. There's a texture pattern for the grip. Below you can see the three areas for the feet, top, bottom, and one on the side. Inside the envelope, you get one Alienware sticker. A quick start guide. And the warranty and safety information. Right on the top is the USB wireless receiver. It's a USB Type-C connector. And below you get the wireless receiver extension. It's basically an adapter with two USB-C female ports. And on the bottom compartment you get the USB cable. I like the included cable. It's long, braided, and comes with a strap. For sensitivity, the mouse can go up to 26,000 dpi. I'm not sure who's going to use it, but it's there in case you need it. The mouse has a total of 7 buttons. So other than the basic ones, you get a back, forward, and a dpi switch up and down. All of the buttons are programmable via software. Next to the sensor is the on and off wireless switch. You get three stones for the RGB lining. One is the scroll wheel, the other one is the Alienware logo, and the last one is on the side. The click buttons feel really solid. These are optical switches with magnetic springs. Let's take a look at the connectivity options. For wire mode, just plug any USB Type-C cable. This will also enable charging for the battery. You don't have to use the wireless adapter. You can just plug the USB receiver to a USB-C port in your computer. The included cable works as an extension, reducing the distance between the mouse and the receiver, and allows you to connect via regular USB Type-A port. Like any other Alienware gear, you're forced to use Alienware Command Center. For the RGB lining, you can set up each zone independently. The lining effects are just basic ones. You get Morph, Pulse, Color, Breathing, and Spectrum. Inside the macro section, you can set each one of the seven mouse buttons. Creating a new macro is fairly simple. The keystroke and the macro recording are the important ones. There's also a shortcut and text block options.
Now going into the mouse settings, you get auto endurance mode, which is a low power usage for when the battery is running low. Lightning power saving will turn off the RGB lightning when there's no movement detected. Polling rate delay and the global windows mouse settings. For DPI settings, you get five different levels, and the sensor goes up to a maximum of 26,000 DPI. You can toggle between them here, or you can use the DPI switch buttons. Under calibration, there's a lift off distance. You can set this to one or two millimeters. Overall, I think the mouse is okay. There are cheaper options for $100 that offer more features. The Alienware 620 makes more sense when it's priced between 50 or 60 US dollars. The things that I like about it, it's lightweight, the battery has a fast charge, and the button clicks feel very solid. The grip from the sides is hard plastic, so it won't get worn out like the rubber side grips. Now for the things that I don't like about it, it only has a few buttons, back and forward, and the DPI switch up and down. And the software can be annoying to work with. Alright, that's it for today's video. I hope you like it, and I'll see you on the next one.